Hi, I'm Hassan, the lecturer here at the Institute of Medical Education. Today, we're going to take a look at solutions to Section 3 of ACES GAPS at Pink Booklet, Practice Test 3, specifically Unit 10, Questions 28 to 30. And in this unit, we're going to take a look at nuclear physics and some simple chemistry. I mean, you don't have to have a background in the physics or the chemistry, you just have to have a keen eye for the, uh, I guess, the simple mathematical arithmetic that's presented here. So we're told in the stimulus that um, PET, it's a commonly used diagnostic tool. Um, so positrons, they're similar to electrons. They have a charge of plus one, not minus one. And um, if we take a look at the radioactive isotope fluorine, which is makes the basis of these questions here. Um, so fluorine 18, it's commonly used as the positron emit emitter. And um, the isotope is used in a cyclotron. Um, by bombarding, uh, or it's produced in a cyclotron by bombarding oxygen 18 with protons. I mean, it's a very short stimulus, but um, I mean, you don't have to really read it because uh, the questions are straightforward here. So before we dive into uh, question 28, I think it's important we do uh, familiarize ourselves with the nuclear physics here and what an atom actually is. So recall that an atom, it's um, composed of protons, neutrons and electrons and i've got an example here of lithium um, we can see that if you take a look at the periodic table you don't have to memorize it but it would help if you understand what the periodic table is telling us so we have three protons in lithium also important to note that the number of protons determines what the element is so if this was um, three protons it's going to be a lithium if this was two protons you'd know straight away it's going to be helium. One proton is a hydrogen. So just keep that in mind. So um, if I actually were to remove an electron, so we can see here the shell structure. So we've got two valence electrons here and one, sorry, two electrons here and one valence electron on the outside shell. You see that lithium wants to lose that electron so it can have a nice full complete uh, electron configuration. So what would happen is the lithium plus, so we move an electron, it'd be satisfied. So take into account that our three represents the amount of protons, but that's if uh, the amount of electrons would also be three if it was in neutral form. However, if it was lithium plus, it'd be two electrons. So keep that in mind. So the seven up here represents the mass number. So the mass number is the amount of protons and neutrons. So we know it's going to have three protons, and the difference between these two is going to be four neutrons. But you can see that here in the nucleus, three, four. So um, if, if, you, if you do find it difficult to uh, understand the, the background behind uh, the atomic structure, I think it's important you, you do <clears throat> go back and study it because it, it will help you conceptualize what's happening here in these reactions. So um, also, just, just as an aside, if it's going to be lithium plus, the electron configuration would just be a 1s2. So also keep that in mind because you might get questions in your future games about electron configuration and how to write them down properly. So um, often elements, they come in both radio radioactive and non-radioactive versions because you're probably like, how do we get the mass number? Well, it isn't just one element because we know that lithium can exist as different types or different radioactive or non-radioactive forms. So the atomic mass of an element takes into account the average of the weights of all of these different isotopes. So that's important to note. So before we dive in as well, um, there is some key arithmetic you have to consider. So for question 29, but we'll get into that when we, uh, just in a second, when we get to that question. So first, let's just dive into question 28. So I'll clear my screen here. It says, which of the following nuclear equations represents the emission of positrons from fluorine 18? Now, the best way to, the easiest way to read um, these reactions or these emission uh, uh, schematics is you just have to satisfy the equation. So let's just write it down. So if you've got 18 fluorine, so it's got, remember, we have nine protons and we have nine neutrons. And because it's neutral, there's nine electrons. So you can just write it if you wanted to, but you don't have to for this question. But it's just to keep, uh, just to understand what's happening here. We've got nine electrons, nine protons, nine neutrons so it's going to go to so what's happening is we're emitting a positron so let's just write that down so we're going to emit a positron which means 
one positron or say the or the um the proton here you have to add it to make nine so you have to add it to this element so this element is going to have to have eight protons remember what we said at the beginning the proton is going to determine the nature of the element and you know straight away if you take a look at the electronic uh, sorry at the periodic table the element with eight protons has to be oxygen so you know straight away without even looking at the options available it's got to be oxygen and we're adding zero at the top here so we're adding zero neutrons so that means it's just going to stay as 18. so what we've done here is we've just added a proton to the um oxygen or in this instance a positron to make our fluorine so if we go backwards in the reaction so that's why the answer has to therefore for 28 be a so i mean we do have to uh do this again for 30 but they kind of do break it up now of question 29 so if we take a look at 29, okay, if we clear the screen here now. So question 29 says the radiation doses are calculated um, per kilogram of body tissue for which the SI unit is one joule. So we've got, let's just write it down. One GY equals one joule per kilogram. That's important. So they've given you the units for a reason. So they're telling you that one uh, an average from a signal annihilation is approximately 10 to the minus 13 joules. And there is an average of 10, so 10 to the 9 annihilation, annihilations per second over 20 minutes needed for a PET scan. So that's the first half of the, um, the first half is we're going to try to calculate the joules, the energy. So we're told that it's in 20 minutes, so over, per second over 20 minutes. So remember, 20 minutes is the same as 60 seconds times 20. So that means it's going to be 60. So 60 seconds in one minute. So 60 times 20. So 20 minutes is going to be 1,200 seconds. So we can write that as, so let's just keep it all in scientific notation, as 1.2 by 10 to the 3. Now for our joules, so these are all going to be joules. Now, it's important to note that you need to know this before you obviously do the GAMSA, but how do we work with scientific notation? If we're multiplying scientific notation, we add these numbers at the top. If we're dividing, we subtract. And in this instance, it's telling us you have an average of this many joules over this many seconds with this many annihilations, which means we're timesing all three. So we're going to do minus 13 plus 9 plus 3 but because it's 1.2 times so this is going to be 1 by 10 so this is going to be 1 by 10 so what we have here is so it's going to be minus 13 plus 9 is minus 4 plus 3 is minus 1 so times 10 minus 1 and we see here it's going to be 1 times 1 times 1.2 is still 1.2 so what we have here is 1.2 by 10 to the minus 1 joules. In the second half of the question, it says, what is the best estimate of the whole body dose received by a 60 kilogram person? So we're told, and remember, we're told that our one uh, gray, so the SI unit for gray, is one joule per kilogram. So it has to be per kilogram, so per 60 kilograms. So we're told it's a 60 kilogram person. So we have to do 1.2 by 10 to the minus 1 divided by 60. But how do we do this easy? Um, how do we, uh, we have to convert it to a number that we're easy to work with. So let's convert this to 120. So if we do that, it's going to be 120 by 10 to the power of minus. So think about it. 1, 2. So we're going to add a 0 up here. So to the power of minus 3. So we're going to do that divided by 60 kilograms. So 120 divided by 60 is going to be 2 by 10 to the minus 3 gray. So gy. So that's our answer. So the answer is therefore going to be 0 0.002 gy. So that's why the answer for 29 is d. So now we can move on to question 30, which states, which of the following nuclear equations represents the production of radioactive fluorine in a cyclotron? Remember what we said before, we have to satisfy the equation. So it looks like on the left-hand side, it's going to be 18, so it's going to be oxygen 
So an isotope of oxygen plus a proton. Sorry, what am I doing here? Plus a proton um, is going to go to. So think about it. Think about what we're doing here. We're adding a. Well, if we're going to add a proton, let's take a look at what the um, final product is. So the product is is going to be our isotope of fluorine plus what? So if we have 9 here and 18 up here, so that means we've got 8 plus 1. We're not adding protons because um, we've already got our, uh, we, we already have our protons satisfied here. So sorry, we're not releasing protons. So what are we going to release in this reaction? So if we take a look, 18, 18. So what we're actually releasing here is going to be a, so if we take a look, it's going to be a neutron. It's because we've went from, remember what we said here? So this has four neutrons, but we went from 10 neutrons to nine neutrons. So we're adding a neutron here. So it's gonna be a neutron. So think about it. So we've got nine neutrons, 10 neutrons. So we're adding a neutron. So that's why the answer for 30 has to be D. Sorry, I just had to double check the options they gave because um, if you don't double check in the GAMSAT, they might trick you. That's why I took a little second to hesitate because I'm like, hmm, wait a second, what is it? Is it neutrons, protons, electrons? No, it's neutrons. So if you're still having difficulty uh, understanding this uh, nuclear physics or this chemistry, I mean, you can um, post your queries in the comment section below or you can contact us directly. We'd love to help. Thanks for your time. Bye now.